Hello everyone, Loremaster Sotek here, and I wanted, therefore I am, making a video about all the stuff going on with Games Workshop right now. And the reason that I want to make a video about it is frankly that it kind of keeps spilling more and more and more into my spaces, and it, it's just kind of one of those unavoidable things, as wrapped up as I am in various aspects of the Warhammer community. So I am trying my best to get out ahead of it and to put my thoughts out because I keep getting asked about it and hopefully I can just direct people to this video instead of having to just constantly repeat myself over and over and over because it's like a lot. <laughs> and so uh, I just would like to be able to move on with my day. So for anyone unaware, there's been kind of a kerfluffle in the Warhammer community because Games Workshop is basically moving forward with opening a new service known as Warhammer Plus. And as part of Warhammer Plus, they are bringing out their own animations. And there essentially has been a situation where because they're unleashing this new service, they needed to update their um, kind of like their IP protection or intellectual property rights to just kind of update to go along with all the new stuff they're making because they're making fan animations. Oh, well, sorry, they're making animations, so they do not want there to be fan animations that is competing with their releases. Um, so um, that is kind of the situation. Um, it has basically resulted in all of the animation channels vanishing for various reasons or uh, in the case of one of them becoming demonetized but still being up and then it's kind of spiraled from there due to a ton of misinformation and misunderstandings. Um, so I'm going to do my best to just kind of state things as I've come to understand them with doing a good day or two's worth of research and uh, try and help my community be on the up and up about what's going on so that you can make informed decisions about what you want to do about it, if you even care. Uh, because frankly, uh, I, I don't mean this in like a, a, a mean way or like to try and say like, oh, I don't care. But I will say that this is very much a 40K community issue, not really something that's going on with um, like Age of Sigmar or Fantasy. Um, Got nothing to do with us, frankly, uh, just because we don't have fan animators for whatever reason. Um, and uh, the 40k community is definitely being affected by it. Um, I, I have very mixed feelings about aspects of it, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of move through my thoughts on it. But uh, the general timeline that I think it's important to be aware of so that you can avoid misinformation and misunderstanding is basically that. Um, Games Workshop seems to, granted, this is me speculating, but I, it seems that Games Workshop was trying to do right by the community. And they were trying to do what all I think all of us would agree is a good thing by hiring everyone that they considered to be competition. Because that's what you want, right? If a company is going to come out and tell someone, hey, you can't do that because that threatens our copyright, then if that person's enough of a threat to shut down, then you should just hire them uh, because clearly they make a good enough product that you want it. And that's what they did. Games Workshop went around to every single one of the 40K animations that they wanted to have and they offered them to come work for them. Um, the stipulations of the deal seemed to be that they told them, okay, you need to, like, you're going to come work for us. Um, you're not allowed to talk about what we're going to be doing because you're under, you know, embargoes or NDAs or whatever. And I guess it would be an NDA, not an embargo at that point. But um, <clears throat> we'll pay you money and all this stuff. Now, we don't know the terms of the deal. Um, whether or not that's our business is debatable. Uh, hopefully these people are being compensated fairly. I have not heard anything from um, animators about... Or her, I have not seen any credible information that Games Workshop is not paying them well or compensating them fairly for their work. But ultimately, that was the situation. And some cracks started to appear due to two scenarios, um, both of which I don't think were huge deals. Um, there was a, there's a YouTube creator by the name of Absolutely Nothing, who is an animator who does 40K content. 
and Games Workshop came to him and said, "Hey, come work for us," and he declined. Um, not from he has a video out it, and I'll have the linking to everything I'm talking about in the description in the top comment. That way, you can see this information for yourself. You know, whenever you're learning about situations, it's always good to do your own research and try and get first or second hand sources, not fifth or sixth hand sources. Um, and I'm essentially a third hand source at this point. So uh, they came to him, offered him a deal. He refused due to personal reasons. I mean, in his video, he literally says essentially that I'm a full-time student and I want to pursue the education that I'm going after so I can, you know, do the life that I want. And being an employee of Games Workshop's Warhammer Plus system did not fit into that. You know, they, they were probably expecting like a certain amount of hours of work or certain timetables. And he looked at his schedule and said, you know what? for my life goals, I'm not comfortable doing that. And that's totally fair, totally valid. And because Games Workshop had literally opened this dialogue with him, they said, okay, well, if you're not going to work for us, then, you know, to fulfill copyright law, we're going to have to ask you to, to not monetize your content. That's Warhammer related. And he said, okay. Like, his video, he doesn't seem upset. He doesn't seem particularly bothered by it. He you know, he shut down his Patreon uh, for his 40K animations and he demonetized his 40K videos. So he's not making money off it, but he said, you know what? I'm going to keep making it because that's what I like doing on my free time. Okay, cool. That's done, resolved. Um, now, is that situation great? Well, no. Like, ideally, if someone is making a genuine... Uh, product from basically the ground up but they're taking heavy inspiration from a a pre-established ip then personally i i think they should be able to monetize it uh, maybe not like sell it as like dvds and stuff but like at least be able to put ad revenue on it and take donations from people that just like it and want to support it that's not money that company is losing you know games workshop uh which uh, this is a tangent, but it's an important tangent. I the th the important thing about this situation to me is that I think this is just another massive show of why modern copyright law is horribly out of date and does not make any sense in the internet age. And even Gaines Workshop is not properly properly defending their IP, um, which there's so many people who have been irritating the shit out of me. Because they're just coming out of the woodwork and being like, oh, they, worked up, has a, they have a right to protect the IP. And they're like, uh, to, they should be, these people, how dare they monetize when they're getting inspired? Like, come on, dude. Um, screw off. Like, <laughs> the, these people, like, if you're taking inspiration from a, a, an IP, but you're creating your own content from the ground up, other than like you're using imagery but you're making the art and stuff like that's i yeah that's stupid idiotic i would say um but the the thing is is that games workshop didn't do what they said they were gonna do because they could have gone iron fist on absolutely nothing because according to their policy on their website which i'll link down below they have a zero tolerance policy for fan animations, not monetized fan animations, mind you, just fan animations. So if you make any kind of animated content as a fan, then according to their policy, you have to take it down. But they had direct communications with absolutely nothing, and they didn't tell them to do that. They didn't send them a cease and desist. They didn't tell him to put down his content. They just told him, hey, just don't monetize it. Because now that we've opened that official communication channel with you, like, because of the way copyright law works, we have to tell you, please don't monetize that. And he said, cool. And that's it. The second of the two incidents that I mentioned earlier was a creator by the name of Sodas. So Sodas was a heavily beloved member of the 40K animation community who, from what I understand, made some of the most well-loved animations and he had zero issues with games workshop uh he is someone that was actually hired or at least was going to be hired by games workshop and because he took down his content um as part of that stipulation 
he got attacked by a part of the 40k community which i'm going to say without any evidence that i think it's a minor but vocal part of the 40k community i don't know if that's true um i'm, I'm kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt but it could have been a large who knows but soda's got enough harassment that it genuinely sp spooked him away from <clears throat> making 40k animations anymore um, he put out a public statement where he basically said, I don't want to do 40K anymore because this experience has been horrible. So the 40K community basically did that meme where they shot Hannibal Burris in the back and were like, how could GW have done this? When Games Workshop wasn't the villain in that situation, the 40K community was. Once again, I'm not blaming the entire 40K community for that. I'm just trying to state the facts as they happen. So here we have a case where Games Workshop tried to hire all the fan animators. They got pretty much all but two of them, and the two they didn't get, one of them refused and is still making fan animations. He's just not able to monetize it, which he seems okay with. And the other one is someone who got chased out by the community that enjoyed his works. <laughs> like, what? Um, and that's it. Um, the situation escalated about two days ago, uh, two or three days ago, uh, when another channel uh, by Alfred Brusa, who created the very, very famous or infamous, I guess, if you want, um, uh, animation series called If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speak Device, um, basically decided to shut themselves down. Games Workshop did not contact them, probably because Games Workshop did not or could not have them as part of Warhammer Plus, so they just decided to ignore them. Um, they didn't reach out to them. They didn't send them a cease and desist. They didn't call them out. They didn't do anything. Games Workshop literally did nothing. They, after they bought up all the animators and told absolutely nothing to demonetize his stuff when he wouldn't work for them, they have not lifted a finger against any other part of the community. So I want to be completely fair to Games Workshop and say that, like, they've basically done nothing. And a massive group of people, not massive, but once again, a minor but loud group of people are running around acting like it's doomsday or that Games Workshop has, like, returned to the dark, horrible, draconian days, which I remember I was there, <laughs> and that's not the case. Um, that That is just, there's no evidence to support that. Um, TTS took themselves down because they felt that they were in a dangerous position and they did not want to risk getting hit with copyright strikes or a cease and desist. Personally, I think Games Workshop at worst, if they had bothered, would have sent them a cease and desist, which is not a huge deal. Uh, like, they would have had to take down their content but, you know, probably would have showed up somewhere else, just privately, and they are basically going to have to strip the monetization from it anyway, but instead they just said, you know what, let's go ahead and shut it down, and let's make our own IP, um, and hopefully the community will work over, which I wish them the best of luck on that. Uh, I really enjoyed TTS when it first started, uh, when it kind of, I, I, I kind of fell off it, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a fan nowadays, but I think they did amazing work, and personally I consider it to be a parody. I think that it would be totally fair under parody law. Granted, their case is much more extreme than I think most cases because they like use official artwork from Games Workshop as part of their animation instead of creating their own art um, that like you know has striking similarities but is still technically theirs. Um, because you know there's a huge gray area there when it comes to copyright law of like you can make something heavily inspired by uh another uh group which is what pretty much everybody does hell that's what games workshop did games workshop starting off with warhammer fantasy literally created a universe where they flat out stole or took heavily inspired uh, content from other fantasy ips uh mixed it with history and were like look it's our totally own unique creation when i would argue that if you were to go back uh, and if, if they, if someone like Games Workshop popped into existence now and was trying to be created, I, I don't know if they'd be able to get away with it. Um, like we even have open letters 
from uh, CEOs of Games Workshop back in like the 90s and the 80s where they were very against copyright law because they felt it was stifling to fan communities, which it's because they were small, like because they were on the receiving end of the situation. But as soon as I got big enough, they were like, oh, well, okay, now we've got a lot of money. So like we are, we're, on the, we're on the dealing end, not the receiving end. Uh, which is just kind of the way these things work because copyright law is so stupid. Um, it's just idiotic and it needs to be updated. But I want to be clear that I, I just, I've looked at everything I can find. I've looked at the evidence. I've watched many other channels, um, um, especially those that are affected, you, you talking using direct sources. And I just don't see evidence that Gaines Workshop is like, tearing apart the fan community they they updated their ip page and have done z literally nothing since um i am not okay with modern copyright law and i think that it's draconian uh and that it's unenforceable to make things uh even more clear like a lot of the crap on games workshops ip page they cannot enforce like so much of it is goofy um, of them being like, ah, if you do any of these things, like, we're gonna get you, and it's like, yeah, right. Um, like, it, you could, it's just not that hard to avoid it. Um, a lot of people are upset about TTS. I get that. I genuinely get that. When you have a series that you really, really love, and you're super passionate about, and it's been going on for years, and Games Workshop, once again, never did anything to them. Or against them they decided to remove themselves from the situation they didn't have to do that um, uh, I understand the reasoning behind that what they did that but they made the decision to step out of the situation because they were worried about potential futures with very little evidence to support it which is totally fine and valid like it's their content they can do whatever they want but, um, you know, I just, I don't think it's fair to, like, suggest that Games Workshop is, like, this super big evil uh, megalomaniacal company when they just haven't done anything. Um, however, however, I will say that I think it's totally valid to be upset with Games Workshop about Warhammer Plus devouring, like, basically pulling a Nagash and just devouring all of these fan animators. Um, you know, it's clear that uh, fan animation has been a thing for a long time in the 40K community. Games Workshop did nothing. Um, it's been years, many years, and Games Workshop was content to sit back and do nothing. And then they decided, you know what? I bet we could make money from that. And so they swooped in and scooped it all up. But once again, they could have been way bigger assholes about it. They could have come out and just started throwing out cease and desist like it was like dollar bills at a strip club, but they didn't. They went and tried their genuine best, it seems, to hire all of these people, which I frankly commend them for. Um, I realize that it's super shitty when there's something that you enjoy essentially for free, uh, you know, I'm sure that not everyone who enjoyed these animations and is very upset at them being gone was a patron supporter or had ad block turned off. So they were probably consuming these videos and giving literally nothing back to the creators other than just like a view, I guess. Maybe they were nice and clicked the like button. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, I just, uh, something free becoming put behind a paywall sucks that there's no denying that and modern copyright as it exists sucks and if you're upset with this situation you do not like what warhammer plus is and represents of like games workshop trying to monetize fan content because you could argue that's what they're doing i think that's i don't know if i'd 100 percent agree with that argument but i understand it um then don't support it like you you have the power you have the right to refuse to support games workshop if you want to boycott warhammer plus or if you want to take it further and boycott everything games workshop related that is totally valid 
you know, you can buy minis from other companies. You can play other games. Um, you can do all this stuff if you think that Games Workshop is doing predatory practices. That's totally valid and fair. Um, and there, I, I've seen a surprising amount of people coming out of the woodwork trying to get upset at the people who are upset and being like, oh, they're being ridiculous. Like, we shouldn't, like, uh, Games Workshop, it, like, is, hasn't done anything wrong and these people trying to boycott them are childish and stupid. But it's like, dude, it's their money. They can do whatever they want with it. Fuck off. Like, if you're comfortable with the situation and you want to keep supporting Games Workshop because, like, you're either happy with the situation or you just don't care, fine, that's valid. Like, good for you. But, like, don't fucking act like the people who are wanting to boycott Games Workshop are somehow villainous, snidey children when they're just not comfortable supporting certain kinds of business practices. Like, fuck off, dude. That's it's their money it's none of your business but at the same time to those of you who do who are upset with games workshop and who do think that you you know there's something about the situation where you don't want to support them don't mess with people who are enjoying the hobby still like if a creator still is enjoying warhammer content and is still covering warhammer stuff or buying warhammer stuff that's their money they can do whatever the fuck they want with it leave them the fuck alone like mind your own business like you can make an argument you know you can come in and be like hey what are your thoughts on this they don't have to talk about it no one owes you an explanation but i, I just there's just a lot of stupid shit happening to be frank um like as far as i'm concerned it just boils down to this uh copyright law is stupid and it should be rewritten to make sense in the age of the internet because currently it does not I find that copyright law is way overly oppressive um, and that people who are heavily inspired or in just regularly inspired by an IP but create their own genuine content should be allowed to be paid by people who really enjoy that content. Uh, the idea that you shouldn't ever, ever morally be allowed to monetize something because you took inspiration or heavy inspiration from another IP to me is absolute dog shit. And I think that's a horrible opinion and you should be ashamed of yourself for not supporting people expressing their creativity. There's plenty of money in the world and the idea that a, com a megalithic company like Disney or Marvel or Games Workshop is like, oh, they're, they're losing precious dollars because some guy on the internet is making a parody. Like, fuck off. They're, they don't. What? That's not money they're going to get anyway, because they're not creating that content. That guy is. Um, but as I've said, I don't think Games Workshop has done anything that warrants such a reaction. Um, <laughs> two thirds of the things that people are really upset about in that they lost sodas and they lost TTS were self-inflicted. <laughs> TTS took themselves out of the equation understandably once again but they made that decision that's that's on them that's their choice uh games workshop as far as i'm concerned and can tell games workshop has not changed like i just there are a lot of folks that just keep i seen that people are just like oh they're they're obliterating all the goodwill they've earned over the last couple of years and I just, I don't think they've destroyed all of it. I think that's too much. I think they've certainly scared the community. I think they've really scared the community. And I think that was a dick move. Um, I, I think that, but once again, I, I blame this more on the, the fundamentals of copyright law as to Games Workshop themselves. Don't get me wrong. I am totally willing to just like eat my words and admit that I'm a dipshit. If weeks from now or months from now, Games Workshop starts throwing out cease and desist and starts taking down lore channels like mine or starts taking down hobbyist channels and taking down battle report channels, like, because I, I could see how you could argue that, like, if Games Workshop, according to their stuff, like, if they came out and they said, hey, this is our tabletop game, if you want to watch battle reports, you've got to subscribe to Warhammer Plus. And we're going to send a cease and desist to anyone else that does battle reports because it's our game. Um, 
I mean, I, you could be like, well, that's a that's a slippery slope argument. And I'd be like, yeah, I, I don't think it's possible either. But like, the, the problem with copyright law is that Games Workshop could go after any of us and most of us could do fuck all about it because I can't afford to fight them in a legal battle and I don't think you can either. So I don't think it's, I think it's understandable that people are anxious. Um, and if you're getting upset with people because they're anxious, you're the asshole, frankly. Um, and I, I'm not talking about hypotheticals. I've seen people doing that and that's not cool. Um, it's very understandable for people to be anxious about what Games Workshop is doing because there's a titan moving that can easily squash them and they have zero guarantees. Uh, you know, I feel comfortable, but that's because I feel like I've got a good pulse on what GW is doing and I could totally be wrong. And if I get smacked, well, you know, I'll adjust. I'll do what I got to do. Um, but I'm rambling. Uh, that's all I have to say on the subject. Hopefully my opinion is clear enough. Once again, if you want to boycott Games Workshop, that's totally fine and valid, and I wish you the best of luck. Um, I, If you want to express your opinion to them, I know that GW, uh, I believe, has a physical mail address that you can send complaints to the company. However, I would heavily advise you to send a sternly worded, worded letter, not a like a flame message like it should probably it should be it should probably be respectful even if sternly worded uh you probably should try and be a little diplomatic even if you're upset but just express that you're upset by saying that and don't attack employees that's fucked up and not okay don't send death threats don't attack employees don't attack the warhammer community twitter page those people are literally grunts they did not do this to you. They are not on the legal team at Games Workshop. They don't make the rules. Leave them alone. They have nothing to do with this. Like, don't go on Twitter tracking down Games Workshop employees and harassing them. Don't be a douche to the person at your local DW store if you choose to keep shopping there. Um, and if you don't care about this, that's totally fine. But I also think you should be respectful to the people that are worried. Um, and to the many people out there who are fan creators, whether you're like a VTuber that's Warhammer inspired or a lore channel, or you do battle reports, or you're a hobbyist that builds and paints minis, or you're someone that shows off uh, Games Workshop books because you've got like a partnership with them, uh, even though your partnership with them, uh, according to their IP website, you're breaking their IP content rules, um, and they don't have any stipulations in their IP policies about YouTubers, so there doesn't seem to be a gray area for you, but they're totally they're totally supporting you. So, <laughs> you know, um, that's why I just, to me, their IP page is literally just legal jargon. I don't think it's a threat. I think it's just, like, the shit that some lawyer was like, you have to have this, and someone up there was like, oh, okay, and then they just posted it up there and didn't think about it. And... I understand why it makes people anxious, but I genuinely do not see evidence nor think that Games Workshop is about to start ripping the community to pieces. So there's no need to panic, <laughs> in my opinion. Granted, it's just my opinion. You may think I'm a dipshit. That's totally fine. I don't care. Um, if, if you are anxious about it and you say, you know what, this is a lot of anxiety and pressure. I'm not comfortable with this and I want to change my content to be something not Games Workshop affiliated. That's great. It's totally fair. I understand that. Good on you. You got to do what you got to do. I still feel comfortable revolving my channel around Warhammer. Um, and I don't intend on changing it anytime too soon. But I, you know, I also have a video game that technically is the focus of my channel. Games Workshop doesn't even support Warhammer Fantasy anymore. And before you say Warhammer the Old World, Warhammer the Old World is not the same as Warhammer Fantasy. Those are two distinct things. It's the same universe, but there are going to be significant changes. There's going to be changes to the lore. There's going to be changes to the playable factions. There's going to be changes to the characters. It's not going to be the same. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I cover and the stories I tell are not... And that's okay. Like, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm not upset about it. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. But, like, that, that's just the thing. 
is that if you are a 40k animator specifically then yes i think you have a right to be concerned and paying attention to what's going on i don't think if games workshop has not gone after you already i don't think they're going to i don't think there's going to be a second wave um however if you're anybody else in the community i honestly think games workshop could not give less shits about you uh, in the sense that i don't think they even notice you exist or i exist i don't think they give a crap about the lore channels i don't think they give a crap about painting channels or hobbyist channels or battle report channels or any of that i think as far as they're concerned we're free advertising and they're content to keep us around so uh, until that changes that's all i have to say on the subject uh i hope this has been educational uh probably not since i was rambling and only had bullet points instead of an actual script but uh yeah that's all i have to say and i'll see you guys around thanks for watching